Hey guys, welcome back. So today, as you can see by the very large square in front of me, I'm going to be making a silicone mold. This is my uh, Let's Resin uh, silicone mold making doodah. Link in the description if you're interested. Uh, and this, I have every piece that it comes with on here. Uh, reason being is because makes up a little wonky shaped and bit big, so I need all the space that I can get. And what you hear crinkling in the background here is I am opening up a fresh roll of packing tape. That's right, because we're going to be using packing tape to seal the bottom so we don't get any leaks. Um, normally I would use my obnoxious blue tape, but I don't have enough of it. So, that is why we're using packing tape. So I'm just going to go through and uh, essentially um, just seal up the bottom as soon as I get this tape started. Good lord. You know, it's like they put the little sticker on there, hey, this is the end of the roll, but it's not. It's not. The end of the roll is actually up here. <laughs> so it's like, ah, I bait it. Here we go. Alright, so basically all I do comes through and stick my packing tape down. Make sure that it's sealed up really well. Cut it off. And second verse, same as first. So that's what I'm going to do. Stick you guys in fast forward to this because it is really not very exciting at all. Right. So now that this is done, or that is done, I'm just going to go through and press, press, press. Make sure that I've got everything pressed down really well. And what we're going to be making is this. It's a dish. Um, it's just a little leaf-shaped ceramic trinket dish that I got from um, Michael's Craft Store. Here's all of the do not use for food. Food can turn from space. It may be harmful and then uh, do not use for food, etc., etc., in French. Uh, so what I am doing with this, I just want to get all of the dust off because it's been sitting on my desk. And just make sure that the surface is clean, that there's no fingerprints on it or anything like that because fingerprints and everything, anything that's on the original will end up on your mold. And you don't want that. Unless you do. And then, you know, hey. So I'm just dusting that off, giving it a good little swipe. And then stick it as in the middle as I can get onto that tape. So the tape holds it still. looks good, doesn't it? Yes. So the packing tape is twofold. One, it keeps the silicone from leaking out the bottom. And two, it keeps whatever you're making the project of stuck down. So it uh, doesn't float up during the whole of the process. I'm just going to make sure that that's stuck down really well. Using my paper towel or high tech mist mitigation device to make sure that I don't put any fingerprints on it. 
And there's that. Now, you'll notice, gee, there's two big spots of nothing here. Yep. Uh, that would take up a whole heck of a lot of uh, silicone. But if you're low on silicone like me, you kind of want to not do that. So I have a bunch of these little pieces of failed mold. I say failed, unsuccessful mold uh, that I'm going to stick down onto said sticky tape in the corners to help me save on silicone. So that'll help take up some space. Now I'm still going to need, it, it, it's always surprising how much silicone you really do need when you do this. You look at it and you're like, oh, that's not going to take but a few ounces. Ha! Yes, it will. It will take more than a few ounces. Trust me. <laughs> so I'm going to go uh, grab some of my T-Expert uh, 10A silicone rubber and mix them up. I'll be right back. And while I'm sitting here mixing silicone, I did forget something. Um, so, I want to rectify that. What I forgot, spray my doodah, my little tray, with some Pam. No, silicone Pam. Uh, if you don't have silicone spray, um, in a pinch, yes, you can use Pam. Um, I wouldn't suggest using a whole lot of it, it's vegetable oil. <laughs> But I'm just going to spray a little bit of my silicone release spray on here, mainly along the back because um, the silicone release spray will help not only it release from the mold itself, but also it'll make it slightly slippery to where the bubbles will have less of an encouragement to stick uh, to the underside of the project. So, just a little FYI there. And then I'm going to wipe off any excess because it does leave a bit of a film uh, on whatever you spray it on. So, even if you end up wiping off a little bit of it, uh, it's not going to hurt anything. So, anyway, back to mixing. I have eight ounces of my T-Expert 10A silicone rubber. I really, really like this stuff a lot. Um, it is very user-friendly. It's one-to-one. Uh, it's very economically replaceable, uh, which I like to say in lieu of saying cheap, uh, because it's not cheap. Cheap tends to make people think that it's low quality, and this is not. Uh, this is some of the best silicone that I've used, and it is very, very, very economically priced. And plus, if you're in the U.S., I can't speak for U.K. or Canada or anywhere else, but if you're in the U.S., Amazon has this stuff on sale all the time. Uh, T-Expert puts the 64, 68, uh, over 60 ounce uh, set on sale for like half off a lot. Um, so keep an eye out. Uh, again, link in the description box for, uh, for this stuff. I love it. I really do. It, it is worth it. It is worth it. And if you've never used uh, silicone rubber before, it is so, so easy. It's literally one-to-one -one measuring by weight or volume because um, the, the bottles both weigh the same. Uh, almost, dare I say, foolproof. Because trust me, I am a fool. All right, so I'm going to finish stirring this up. I'm going to let it sit and degas a little bit. It does have an amazing work time of about 45 minutes before it starts really tacking up, and I will see you then. All right, so I ran my silicone through my airless, sorry, not the camera, uh, for about five minutes. Can you put silicone in an airless in a debubbler? Yep. 
You sure can. Just keep an eye on it. Because it bubbles. It bubbles up, much like resin does. But silicone tends to bubble up a lot faster. So keep an eye on it. If you have to hit the pause button, hit the pause button. If you don't, great. Like I said, uh, I went put it through for about five minutes, and it's gotten most of the big bubbles out. It's looking good. Um, and on that note, I happen to have an extra uh, resiners airless machine, the good one, the big one. Um, still new in the box, never been touched, never been opened, never been much more than breathed on. Uh, you might even get some free dust with it. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just pick a random comment on this video and uh, I'll send it to you for free. So yeah, if you need one, if you want one, if you want to gift it, if you want to do something with it, you know, holiday season is coming up, blah, 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 all that good stuff. Uh, we're coming up to Chris Mahana Kwanzaa season. So uh, yeah, just put a comment. The only thing that I ask is that you're subscribed. You don't even have to be a member if you don't want to be. I mean, if you want to be, yay. Uh, but subscribing is free. So is leaving a comment. Hit the like button too while you're at it, if you you know so inclined. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just making sure that everything is clipped together really well, that my tape is still very firmly connected to everything, and uh, yeah, we're gonna pour some silicone. Um, I I this is me. Um, whatever your process is, you do you. Sorry, I have a cut on my finger. Um, I don't pour directly onto whatever I'm making a mold of because silicone is one of those funky animals that sometimes it can uh, pool and solidify really quick. Um, kind of like candle wax. That if you pour hot candle wax onto something cold, um, it hardens up real quick and makes like a, a blob. And I don't want that uh, because this is chilly. It's ceramic. Uh, and also, if you're running your um, silicone through uh, a debubbler, just make sure that it doesn't heat up too much because, you know, much like humans, if you heat something up, its metabolism gets faster and it gets hot. So, there you go. The more you know. Uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and pour this in. And I'm going to pour it in over here at the side. And if you see chunks, uh, that's just other pieces of silicone that just happens to be in a cup. It's not going to hurt it. Um, silicone sticks to silicone really well. It's very forgiving in that matter. So. The only thing that you want to worry about is if you're using different densities of silicone together. Like if you you realize you're, make, you're making something and you're like, oh. Poo, I'm out of my 10A. I think I'll throw some 30A in with it. Don't do that, please. I mean, you can, but um, in a pinch. But I wouldn't suggest it because the different densities of uh, silicone can affect the mold itself in that it uh, they don't cure at the same rates. And uh, the thicknesses are different, obviously. So, uh, yeah, I would avoid that if at all possible. Uh, I'm going to need to make up a little bit more, so give me just a minute. Well, while I'm stirring this up, I made another six ounces PS, and by the way, uh, while I'm mixing this up, do you have to run your silicone through a debubbler? No. Did I choose to for time's sake? Yes. Uh, if you let silicone sit, or if you put it in the refrigerator, it will degas on its own. Um, if you put it in the fridge, it'll uh, slow down the curing process. Um, if you just leave it on the countertop, it will debubble at room temperature. Um, 
my only thing is, is if you're going to leave it on the countertop, just cover it with like a, a paper towel or something just so dust doesn't get in it, you know. How we all love dust. Dust is amazing. It's uh, fantastic. P.S. Um, in the description box below, there is a link to an Amazon product that I really like uh, that I'm currently uh, poking around at. Uh, it's an air purifier. So far, so good. All right. So I've got this all mixed up. Um, if you choose to use a deep bubbler, great. If you don't, please don't torch it. Silicone. Uh, don't use heat or anything. I mean, some people I've seen say, oh, you can use a long neck lighter. Sure. All right. If, if that's your thing, go for it. Um, but heat will cause the silicone to get a skin on the top of it that can uh, adversely affect its ability to degas. And uh, so, yeah, don't do that, um, in my humble opinion. So take that for whatever you want. I'm pouring from about camera height, which is about eight inches above the project itself, just to help it, you know, knock out some of the bubbles maybe in there, because I did not run this bit through the debubbler. I really wanted the debubbled portion, if you will, um, to be on the uh, the butt of the project. <laughs> because that's where a lot of the bubbles tend to try to cling when they're coming up um, the side of the process, or the side of the project. Um, the bubbles will try to get trapped uh, along the sides and around the edges and things like that, and I didn't want that, so that's why I chose to put that part through the deep bubbler. All right, so I've got some space here. So what I'm going to do is add a couple more pieces. Now that I have a better idea of what I'm looking at, a um, couple more pieces of. Uh, Silicone, formerly known as molds, and to it. So let's see if I can avoid having to mix up more. Just to give it a little bit of space. A little bit of. Now, also, um, I'm not worried about using. Uh, I'm not using gloves doing this because this uh, this silicone is non toxic. It is food safe. Um, it is, you know, uh, it, it's, if it's safe enough to, to bake with, <laughs> um, it's safe enough to put your hands in, just wash your hands. And I am exceptionally neurotic about um, washing my hands. So, just ask Captain Critter to go through inhuman amounts of paper towels and baby wipes and whatnot because I am always, always washing my hands. I don't know if it's an OCD thing or if it's just a, you know, thing, but I wash my hands a lot. That and since uh, wearing gloves tends to uh, inhibit my ability to feel things. Uh, I know I've had people, the whole time I've had my channel come at me about, you need to be wearing gloves. You know what? I know. If I could, I would. But <laughs> um, I can't. It's actually a thing with me. I have a medical condition that keeps me from uh, being able to feel things real well. It's not neuropathy. It's something else. Something bigger and better. Uh, you know, that's another story for another time. Um, so I do want at least a good eighth to quarter inch um, above, uh, just so I know that I have a good base of silicone on the bottom when we're making our projects. Uh, so that looks uh, mighty fine to me. So we're going to go ahead and let this cure. Uh, depending on the temperature and the uh, thickness that you make your project, 
Uh, this resin normally um, cures completely in about four to six hours, which is brilliant. I love it. And also on a side note, um, it doesn't smell. <laughs> You know how some silicone products and some resin products and some all sorts of different products, they have this like wonky smell to them. This stuff doesn't, uh, which is nice. It's very, um, it's very neutral smelling. It just sort of smells like, uh, like plastic. <laughs> essentially that's what it is. But anyway, uh, enough rambling. I will see you guys when it's time to get this little dealer out. See you then. So it's been about... Uh, five, six hours or so. So I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the mold. Just taking off its little alligator clips. First. So we can release the hounds. the bag that I keep everything in. There we go. So the mold making kit comes in this cool little bag. So you can be organized. Like me. I do keep everything in here because it's got all the alligator clips. It does have uh, double sided sticky tape if you want to use that to hold the mold down. Um, and a couple of other things. It's just, you know, the double sided sticky tape is kind of annoying to me for annoying for me because it uh, doesn't come off of the mold housing very easily and um, it just it takes a lot to scrape it off of there and uh, so that's why I use packing tape. Jim and Okay. Flip it over. You can see. Packing tape did its job well. Did have a little bit under seepage, but you know, nothing to write home about. Just be careful about your joins and making sure that everything is stuck down really well. And all of this extra is going to go into my bag of extra silicone, which you saw me use. Very easy. Now what I'm going to do is break the freshness seal here, get this out of the housing. So now before I demold this, I am going to go and trim around the edges and I just have a little cuticle trimmer. Comes in most manicure kits that you get darn near anywhere these days. And they just work beautifully. And then we can demold it. I already got a hair stuck to it. It's truly mine. It's not a critter mold unless it's got a hair stuck on it. A 
my glad is little butt. Boot. And there we go. Take a day. Voila. And yes, you do pronounce the V at the beginning of that word. Now, you'll see, looking at the mold itself, where we put the extra stuff in there. Now, very feasibly, if you want to, what you can do is you can be very careful about where you're cutting, but you can cut these pieces off and cut them into chunks and use them as extra silicone bits. Um, or, if you want to, just leave it as is. Depends on what you want to do. I mean, it's up to you entirely. So you can see the inside of the mold. You got those leaf vein detail and everything, which is nice. Very shiny. Very, very shiny. So I'm going to let this cure completely for uh, a few more hours and then. We will pour it, and we will make pretty things and pretty molds. So I will see you then. See you soon. It's been about an hour, and it's had time to tack up a little bit. It's not nearly as moist, <laughs> runny as it was. So what I am doing is I reached into my bag of sparkly shit, and I pulled out some of my uh, beautiful... Uh, mica flakes that uh, Mrs. Lisa Crow made me. I've got the bronze and I've got the uh, gold and orange and yellow mix. And what we're going to do is we are going to sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle some of these onto the bottom of our leafy and some of them may fall, some of them may float, they all may float, they all may fall. Who knows? That's part of the excitement. Is you just don't know. So the sound effects. Why not, right? So I'm just going to sort of tamp those down a bit with my pokey tool. So try to get some of them underneath the surface of the resin. So we will have a nice smooth bottom. Who doesn't love a smooth bottom? Right? That's pretty much that. We'll let this finish doing its thing, finish curing. All right, so get thick. All right, see you guys later. I'm getting omelet vibes. You know, like a like a breakfast burrito <laughs> kind of thing going on here. Anyway, let's demold this, shall we? <laughs> I am very interested to see how our new mold has turned out.
I was really careful when I demold something for the first time with a brand new mold, so that's the reason why I am particularly slow about the process. There we go. Well, you can see. Beautiful. Very shiny on the bottom. And there it is. Look at that. I did get a couple of little bubbles in there just because it wasn't so... Uh, wasn't so terribly pedantic about, uh, you know, poking and prodding and stuff like that, but you know, it's my fault. But look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It's just a little bit of extra resin that's stuck to the side there. I'll take care of that. But isn't that gorgeous? My goodness gracious. Okay, so next thing I want to do. Next thing I want to do, I'm just looking at the mold. That really turned out well. I'm very pleased with that. Very, very pleased with that. Yay! Okay, so we've got my mold aside. I'm going to grab my gold that's resin chrome marker. Shake this up. And what I'm going to do is gently go around the edge. And put them on there. Beautiful Christmas tree. Okay. 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 Here we go. Just filling this little stem. That is lovely. So what do you guys think? <laughs> I'm really excited with the way that it turned out. Um, there are a couple of tiny imperfections on the mold, but, you know, I'm, I'm not mad at it. Um, nothing that can't be fixed. So, there we go. And it's not the silicone's fault, it's my fault. So, just as a FYI. So let me know what you think. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me. I know that this has been a long one. Uh, I really do appreciate you being here, as always. And, uh, yeah, I hope to see you again on the next one. Take care, guys. Cheers. <laughs>